Module 7, Lab 6C. This is Metasploit Web Interface and Registration. So we've seen Metasploit. We've used it a few times now. But there's actually a web interface for Metasploit as well. I'm going to introduce you to that so you can get familiar with it. We need to gain access to our Kali attack system. We need to go from host only to a bridge this time. We're going to replicate the physical network. We're going to hit OK. The purpose of this is that we're going to need to register Metasploit. After your attack system boots up, we're going to log in and get started here. From your login prompt, enter your credentials to gain access. You will arrive here at your desktop. We should be in a bridge state, so let's ping. Externally, we can make it to Google's DNS. We're good to go. This means that we can now register Metasploit. First thing we're going to want to do is start all the required services for Metasploit. So service. PostgreSQL start service Metasploit start and we should be good to go at this point we would normally type in MSF console we're not going to do that we're going to go over here I'm going to open a web browser. If you're trying to load a page here that's connecting back to your target system, that's going to fail. So don't worry about that. We're actually going to change this to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. We're going to use local host, but a different port. We're not connecting to Nessus. Now we're going to connect to Metasploit. Once you connect to this page, you're connected to an HTTPS page. The certificate is not trusted. Tell it you understand the risk. You're going to add an exception and you're going to confirm. At this point in time, we're going to want to create a username and a password. Now, here's a heads up for your passwords. You got to get a little more tricky. Your root and tour is not going to work because this one must contain letters, numbers, and at least one special character. Not contain the username. Not be common and not be predictable sequence of characters either. Username you can get away with that but you're gonna have to get a little tricky here come up with something that you're familiar with that you like to use so that you can get access to the system. Create your account. Now they're gonna want a product key so select get a product key and are we using the pro or are we using community? We're using a community edition. It auto fills a little bit of this stuff for us. You can select student and such in there. It's fine. Type of use is going to be student use. Daytime phone. Get a number in there that works for you. and a work email this is going to be an email address where it's actually going to send your registration key so this must be a valid and working email address say get a free license you'll then go over here check your email address get your product key and we're going to activate you will notice that I have received my product key here you're gonna get something very similar to this you're gonna copy paste activate the license and there you go success if for some reason you did not receive the email then it may be in your spam folder you may have to go back and select a register one more time but this is it once you get to this point you are good to go and this is all we needed for this particular lab right here is just to get this guy registered so we can continue on with 6d so let's go ahead and close out that window we're going to exit up here we're going to come over here to our VMware settings, come back to this network adapter, change this to a host only, and then we can power cycle it. That's going to be it for Lab 6C. We'll be back for 6D.